So Jane, how long have you had constitutive colitis? I was diagnosed officially nine years ago, but I uh, struggled for a couple of years before that, undiagnosed. Um, when I was first diagnosed, I just felt very much, you got your diagnosis, this was the medication, and sent on your way to get on with it. Um, that's very, very hard. You're suddenly facing long-term health condition and the fear of what that means, really, and suddenly you feel that you need to start asking many questions and working out what's how to move forward and deal with this day-to-day -day life, really. So, so Jane, I know that you've used um, a lot of pleasant set of thinking tools uh, along your journey. How, do, how did you first find out about these? When I went on the Think About Your Life website, um, when I was looking at all the examples, it was really easy to use the tools and just input all my own information and then just print it out. So, so I had paper copies so that you could hand it out to all your family and friends and, uh, and start opening those lines of conversation. And then been able to pull all the tools together to produce my profile. Um, and put really personal personal details about mm -hmm. me, about being a Man City fan and that my profile has got to be blue and how I yes. cups of tea. But it's it's really important it makes you who you are and I think that's what again that's what my colitis specialist nurse Rachel was really excited about was the fact it's just completely you. But yes. then also it's got you know yeah. you just need to know the extra bit of support that you need so, and I think that was really the thing that really caught her eye about it from being completely new. It's, it's the detail you put yeah. that really makes you jump out. So things like um, being a huge Manchester City supporter, that you watch matches on TV, see the live matches um, when you can. And even down to cups of tea throughout the day and the strength that you like it, that <laughs> really builders brew. Uh, tea. So that really gives uh, gives me a really strong sense of who you are just from, from reading your profile. And I can see that you've done your own one-page profile, you've done good days, bad days, hopes and fears, and working, not working. Tell us a bit about one of those. Um, the two that were the easiest, and I rattled off very quickly, was working, not working, and good days, bad days, because they literally are what they say, you, you just get down what isn't working and what is working. Hopes and fears was the hardest mm -hmm. by far. I had to be extremely honest with myself and actually really admit how hard things were getting and how scared I was for the future and I hadn't addressed that until then. Right. Or maybe just keep that to my, kept it to myself. So that was definitely the hardest, but probably the most therapeutic long term after I'd finally done it. Um, I found at the end of it, it was the most powerful one, I think, for me. Um, being able to look to the future was a hard thing and worrying about what it holds and mm -hmm. the impact on, of my colitis. Um, but I feel like getting it all down and working through it all and working out the possibilities for the future, I felt it gave me my voice back and helped me to really gain that control that I had completely lost. And, uh, and look towards the future to uh, build my life back better and stronger, yeah. Definitely good days, bad days, I found really useful. Just being able to communicate to everyone around me what I needed on the right days and what I didn't need. And mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't need all the fuss and you just need to get on with it. But then sometimes, you know, just being able to convey the message that you, that you need. Brilliant. And you put that information into your one page profile, or in your case, your one and a half page, <laughs> page profile. Who, who did you share this with, and, and how did that work out? I shared it with, um, I didn't actually work on these tools until um, after my divorce, so I did share this with my ex husband. And bearing in mind, he was very supportive, <laughs> I'll give him that, on, um, with my colitis. But I really wanted to, it was a, his opinion was actually still very valid and, and, and obviously he had seen me at my absolute worst and at my best. So um, his feedback was, was really fantastic and actually there's things I kept from him as well, right, right. which shocked me. I thought, well that's really not good and I've done myself a huge injustice there. And, mm. But I shared it with family and friends and again, half of them, my eldest brother sat me down and said, I didn't know half of them. I just thought you got a little bit poorly sometimes and yeah, it was quite an eye-opener that I think I hadn't been very honest right from the start, I think. 
And you said that sharing this with your housemates made an impact in terms of really being able to be clear about what support you need. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, with housemates it was mainly a food issue, really. Um, they were very, sort of, could be lovingly opinionated on what I should and shouldn't be eating. Mm -hmm. um, and at times I suppose my diet must look very strange and bizarre. Sometimes living on mashed potato and porridge must look very strange, but to me that's what I'm doing to keep my bowel healthy and, and, and pain free as possible. So being able to write it down on a one page profile and let them read it opened up that lines of communication since it wasn't quite confrontational, it wasn't an argument over a meal table because you've said, Don't fuss me about my food kind yeah. of thing. It really that really helped and, and it, it made them realise that maybe, yeah, they weren't quite saying the right things or that they were making something an issue that wasn't an issue mm -hmm. and that actually just leave her to it and she knows she's doing the right thing for her. So yeah. I love the power of the statement you've got here. It says how best to support me about food. I'm the expert about me, my colitis and my diet. So please don't try and advise me on what I should or shouldn't be eating. I know what my system can and cannot cope with every day. It's just so clearly so clearly put, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and what about health staff? Because you spent a lot of time with, with a nurse, didn't you, in the hospital. Yeah. How how did she find this? She found it very interesting and thought that um, definitely she'd like to start with because we have the um, uh, IV drip that takes about three hours to go through so it's almost a perfect time to have, we sit, we have a cup of tea, we talk about coping strategies and, and it's really good, it's almost like therapy as well as having new <laughs> medicine but um, it's, she thought it was a very good idea to be able to just convey the simple things of day to day and, mm -hmm. and how things, because this is such triggered this is, condition is triggered so much by stress and anxiety yeah. and any little thing can just flare you up straight away and then takes you a long time to get back to remission so by eliminating those little stresses can, can really make huge differences so good no that's good so you, you talked about how useful it was to do the reflection yourself for example on hopes and fears and then to record that and be able to share it with people can you share with us some of the specific things you've done or you've changed about your life as a result of using some of the person-centred thinking tools? I think firstly, doing a one-page profile and working with the tools, it's just made me realise I've got to be more vocal. Right. Straight mm -hmm. away, that's the biggest thing I've, I've got to open up more and actually say how I'm feeling. Um, even if it is about a negative day and having a horrible day, I've got mm -hmm. to tell people. And I think that was the main thing mm -hmm. that came mm -hmm. out of this. 